Hey everyone, it's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor. Today we are going to have the ultimate war when it comes to nuts edge control options. Let's jump right in. All right, y'all, so basically to understand how to best go about controlling nuts edge, it's important to understand how the nutsedge plant works in general. So all the Carex varieties here, the way it works is, you know, so this is our soil surface. This is going to be what we actually see above the ground, the plant itself. And then we have these fine little hairs that grow along these tubers. These tubers are going to be, you know, rhizomes like, like you would see in, in a typical turf grass plant. And then they have these fine little hairs attached to it. And at the end of those fine little hairs, you have these nutlets. So the problem when it comes to hand removal of nutsedge, you'll hear people, you know, ah, I pulled nutsedge for an hour and a half out of my yard, and I swear it came back thicker than it ever did before. Well, the problem is, is when you pull the actual plant itself, the hairs that attach to these nutlets are so fine that there's, it's next to impossible in, to get those out unless you dig them out. And even in that instance, uh, it's very difficult to dig out the nutlets because sometimes they may be one inch deep, another time they may be eight inches deep, and so you never really know if you got the entire thing out. So hand removal isn't really a, a feasible option when it comes to nutsedge. It's probably best to go about it chemically. So when it comes to chemically controlling nutsedge, there's several different options on the market. Uh, but probably the three most popular that we're going to be talking about will be one, halosulfuron, also known as sedge hammer. Uh, the other will be sulfentrazone, also known as dismiss. And then third, we will also be talking about sulfonylureas, uh, which also encompasses halosulfuron, but I'm going to be talking about the ones that more pertain to warm season uh, grass types like Monument, Katana, and Certainty. All right, so let's go ahead and start with Sedge Hammer. Uh, the whole reason why I like Sedge Hammer is that it's pretty gentle towards all turf types, both warm and cool season turf. It's gonna exhibit a lot of tolerance towards this product. Uh, it is an ALS inhibitor, so what is going to happen is that it's going to block pro protein production in the plant, eventually weakening the plant far enough that it'll no longer be able to survive. Uh, it is systemic, so it's going to move from the shoot, the actual uh, grass that we see above ground, to the root system. Uh, it's going to display a fair amount of activity in killing the nutlets, but not a great amount of activity in killing the nutlets. Uh, but again, what we're looking at is that halosulfuron is very, very safe for most of your turf types. Okay, so this is a positive thing to use. However, where we run into an issue when using halosulfuron is that halosulfuron is going to prefer, prefer the three to eight leaf stage. So outside of this leaf stage here, you're probably going to have to run into repeat applications. Uh, so if it's a, a new sedge plant that's just started to emerge, um, and you spray it with halosulfuron, chances are you're not going to get very good control. If it's already going to seed multiple times, it's later in the season, maybe August, and you're still dealing with the same sedge plant, chances are you're not going to get great control out of halosulfuron with a single application. All right, that being said, let's move into sulfentrazone, also known as Dismiss. This is probably one of the more popular products out on the market. This is a PPO inhibitor. So this is going to interrupt the chlorophyll production cycle that takes place in the plant. Again, this is another systemic product, so it's going to move from the leaf down to the nutlet. However, this is going to be the one big advantage of sulfentrazone to halosulfuron. At 12 ounces to the acre, we start to see signs of pre-emergence activity. Does this mean sulfentrazone is going to prevent yellow nutsedge? 
there's evidence to say yes, that it, it potentially can. Now, it may not control purple nut sedge from a pre-emergent perspective, but yellow nut sedge and your annual varieties, there's evidence stating that yes, it can. So there's a popular product on the market called Echelon, which is a mix of prodiamine or barricade with sulfentrazone, the dismissed product. Uh, and it is labeled to control yellow nut sedge. To get best control, what you're looking to do is get that full 12 ounces to the acre in three applications. So three, four ounce to the acre applications of sulfentrazone is going to have the greatest amount of damage on these nutlets. So you'll get a fair amount of nutlet control with the house of Furon. You'll get the greatest amount of nutlet control with 12 ounces to the acre total of your dismiss. Now, here's kind of the risk when it comes to sulfentrazone. It's a hot, hot product. When you're above 90 degrees, you start to run into the issue. So 90 degrees, I don't know, you get a little questionable. Uh, you cannot run sulfentrazone with a uh, surfactant or a crop oil or methylated seed oil. I guess you could, uh, but you run into that, that damage potential even greater. Uh, cool season grass types seem to be a little more sensitive to it because of that repairability doesn't exactly exist. Whereas if you're going after some Bermuda, you know, nut sedge and Bermuda grass, Bermuda grass can pretty much grow out any of the damage it takes. Um, I would keep off of things like Centipede or St. Augustine with a product like Sulfentrazone. I think it's actually on the label that you can use it at reduced rates. However, it's not something that I would feel comfortable doing. So, you know, when I say warm and cool season grass types, uh, it can be safely applied to your fescues. It, you know, it talks about minimal rates for fine fescues or chewing fescues, like a red fescue. Um, and then, you know, your warm season grasses, Bermuda and Zoysia grass are gonna be more tolerant of it than say like Centipede and St. Augustine. So, this product here has a little bit greater risk than this product, which may not give you the exact amount of control you're looking for. So, you know, between the two of these products, which one is going to be better than the other? I think that really, that comes up to the turf manager in general. Like I know this last year, I used House of Furon and I was happy with the results. And the reason why I was happy with the results was because um, I did not have that damage to my lawns that I experienced with Dismiss. So in my particular instance, that's why I went after House of Furon. Now that being said, if you have lawns that look like they're nothing but nut sedge, so they're covered with Kalinga species, sedge species, what do you do? How do you tackle it? It's perfectly safe to mix these two products and apply them together in a broadcast application to maximize your level of control. That's a very expensive application to do. However, if you know sedge is your issue, that is the way to go about it. All right, so let's move on in lastly to our warm season uh, turf type. So this is going to be, uh, you know, Bermuda, Zoysia primarily, Centipede and St. Augustine. Be sure and check your labels. I don't know enough about these products on Centipede and St. Augustine to be able to recommend them. However, when it comes to the ultimate sedge control in warm season grasses, these three products right here are as good as it gets. A broadcast application of Monument. So this is what I use on uh, football fields, baseball fields, when I'm spraying out ryegrass. I use uh, Monument, which is trifloxy sulfuron. At 15 grams uh, to the acre, it is just an absolute amazing product. Not only are you going to get rid of all the cool season grass in the lawn, uh, in, the, in the plain surface, you are also going to eliminate just about 100% of all your sedges. Same thing is going to come in with Katana here. Katana is going to give you an even faster burn down of your cool season grasses. So your, your perennial rye will cook out very, very, very fast. And it's also going to eliminate your sedges. Again, what we're looking at use right here is like three ounces to the acre. Uh, Certainty is another product, Sulfol Sulfuron. Uh, this is a fantastic product for warm season lawns, Bermuda, Zorgia grass. 
Um, Sulfosulfuron is going to give you a very thorough kill. It's not the fastest of the three products listed here, uh, but it is going to give you a uh, excellent to above excellent level of control on your sedge varieties. So anyway, y'all, this is going to be the great nut sedge debate. And again, like I said, what it comes down to is going to be what you as a turf manager prefer as a product to use. When you're on warm season grasses, I don't think there's any reason to go this route uh, unless you're going after this pre-emergent activity here with a 12 ounce to the acre rate. If you're going after that, that level of control, then Dismiss is probably going to be your, your product. However, if you're going after something like your ball fields where you know budget concerns are there and you know you have to spray out ryegrass, why not go ahead and control your nut sedge too by using a product like Monument or Katana that is going to be very broad spectrum as far as what else it controls. Uh, and again, for the cool season guys out there, you know, right here, high risk, high reward, which one do you want? Uh, I know I had an issue with getting the damage that occurred on cool season grass types to grow out in periods of heat. So that's why I made the switch to House of Furon. However, there was a couple of instances this year on lakefront properties where sedges were just completely out of control. And what I did was mix a two. I ran both House of Furon and Sulfentrazone as a broadcast application to achieve excellent, excellent control. So, all right, y'all, that's going to get it. That's my video on Nut Sedge, the great war of Nut Sedge. If you guys have any questions, want me to tackle any weeds, any product types, be sure and comment below, and I will get back to you the best I can. In the meantime, if you guys would do me a huge favor, subscribe, hit the like button, let me know what you like, what you don't like. I'm open to it all. All right, y'all, have a good one.